All right, so now let's explain the same thing we explained in the previous video, the rationale for the Landron equilibrium model, but by using uh, two simple diagrams. One diagram describes the uh, market situation, and that's where the demand crosses a supply, and that's where you have your equilibrium quantity at the market level, say Q1. And also, at that point is when you have your equilibrium market price of P1. And since this is a competitive uh, industry, the typical firm will have no choice but to take that price from the market and try to do the best they can with that price by uh, producing at a point in which that price crosses the firm marginal cost curve. So the typical firm in this industry, this competitive industry, will produce a Q1. Now, um, whether this is a short run on the long run situation, as we learned in the previous video, depends on whether the typical company is having profits or not. So let's assume for the time being that this company is having um, no profits. Um, that would mean that the average total cost curve uh, crosses the price curve and the marginal cost curve um, at, the, uh, at the current price. So by making average total cost equals to price, we are assuming that this uh, industry is in the long run equilibrium because there's no incentive for any companies to enter uh, or exit the market because profits, economic profits are zero. Now let's see what will happen in, in this industry if all of a sudden the demand for this product actually uh, goes down, let's say here, to D prime. Well, uh, at least in the short term, there was definitely going to be a lower quantity because the, uh, the price for um, and the price of this product is also going to be lower than before. And that means that the typical firm in this industry will have to actually reduce the price of whatever they're selling. And since they have to produce where the, margin, where the price crosses the marginal cost curve, they will have to reduce the output in order to maximize their profits. Now, the problem here is that now the price, as you see, the price is less than the average total cost. The average total cost is up here, and the price is down here. So this is a situation now, a short-run situation, because now the price is less than the average total cost. And that means that the typical firm in this industry it have, is having economic losses. So what will happen? Well, this is give an incentive to companies to exit this industry. And as more companies exit, that will drive that that will drive the price up and as long as the price is less than the average total cost companies will continue to exit this industry so what that means is that um, we will see companies exiting this industry until the supply is driven back to um, the reduction in the supply drives the price up to the initial point A, where we are back at the uh, at the equilibrium point that we actually had already. This is the same curve here. Let's make it there. It's the same demand curve. So again, let's tell let's tell the story again. So uh, uh, we are uh, originally we are at point A at Q1, uh, and this is the uh, so this is at A. Now uh, the market is at equilibrium. There's no incentive for any other companies to enter or exit. Now, from that point, the demand shift uh, left to D prime, and that lowers the price in this industry, which means that the company now will have to re have to charge a lower price, which forces a typical company to produce a lower output, Q2, and at that point, the typical company will have economic losses because the price is now less, um, P2 is less than the average total cost. So what happens is that companies will have to exit the industry because they're having losses, and they will continue to exit the industry until the price is driven back up to A, and we are back at the, uh, at, the, at the equilibrium level that we had before. Notice that at that point, we kind of lower that. We have Q3 is a typical market. We have a lot less quantity in that market, which probably means that uh, there's a lot less firms operating in that market than there were before, right? So this is both uh, point A and let's call it C, which is equivalent to these two points in the market level. So at that point, um, at point C, there's a lot less number of firms operating in the market 
than what we had before. So I gave you the intuition uh, without the graph, I gave you the graph, and now let's see how, how we can see the same thing by using some uh, simple cost functions.